Yo dudes, Jason here, just with another short tutorial. Um, well, yeah, introducing you guys to one of my favorite things in After Effects. Um, it, I find it a lot of fun, I hope you guys will as well. And it is essentially how to create a parallax effect inside of After Effects. All right, so a parallax effect essentially means that we're going to be taking assets that we have now um, cut out of their initial sort of um, environment, I guess you could say, and we are then bringing them into After Effects as separate levels, and we're going to push them back in um, sort of like faux or um, two and a half D, I guess, pushing it back in, in faux 3D um, so that we can then use our generated camera to create a kind of um, like a cool sort of pan effect going on inside and I'll get to to show you that in a moment. Um, but first, the, the first step that we need to take is cutting out our actual assets. All right, so if you aren't familiar with deep edging, uh, feel free to jump over to the tutorial that I did on that. Um, but essentially, as you can see, I've basically just taken a couple of surfer dudes out of their initial environment. I've placed them in this uh, field. Um, and as you can see, when I start breaking my um, environment apart okay you can see that I've done this quite quickly um, just because I've now duplicated and reversed these things uh, this should actually be sitting somewhere like that um, but I've then broken down the the foreground so I sort of like generated that I split it onto its own layer um, I've got the midground, which I did the same for. I've, uh, well, foreground null number two. I've got the midground, and then I've got the mountains, and then the sky. All right. So as you can see, these are very um, hurriedly done. We were doing them in class, just as an example. I thought maybe I could save myself a bit of time from using it as well. But the principles are the same. Essentially, when it comes to generating a parallax. Uh, using an environment like this, you essentially just want to break it down into its more visible sections, all right, into the visible planes. So the grass over here, I've, as you can see, I've used um, as my sort of foreground. I could have included this knoll over here, this line, um, as uh, my foreground as well. Then we've got a very clear middle ground with this section here, and then we've got our mountains obviously being the background, and then the sky. All right. And once I've gone and deep edged those, what is also then necessary, if I kind of just hide everything else so we can just focus on this, is you are going to need to extend that information um, to the sides. All right. And I'll explain why in a moment, or I'll show you why in a moment. Um, it's obviously always better to be a lot cleaner than this, but this actually does end up working in the end. So at the end of the day, if it works, I guess it's not too terrible. Um, all right, so once we've deep edged all of our assets, we can then import them into After Effects. You'll see that I've got them here. I've already labeled them out differently. And here they all sit nice and ready to be animated. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to now push these objects into 3D space and then start aligning them correctly for um, our parallax effect. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that I'm going to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this parallax class example. All right, that's just the name of my composition. But when I click on that, I get the first option, new comp viewer. All right, and that opens up a second viewing window over here. All right, and for this window, okay, I'm going to sort of, let me just minimize that a little bit more. You'll see that we've got uh, one view. All right, and we've got it saying like top and one. So now that we've got our second view, for any of this to actually take effect, we need to, to uh, excuse me, we need to select all of our layers and we need to turn them into 3D objects. And we do that simply by clicking and turning on this little object over here. All right, so now we've got these little 3D boxes for each layer. And you'll see that now my view has changed. So initially it'll be set to active camera and this is what it will look like. But if I then change where it says active camera to front, right, it's going to be the same. Left, I'll see it from the side. Top, I'll see it from above. Um, and we'll just work with the top view for now. All right. So you'll see all of my layers are being represented as being on the same, th in the same three dimensional space, essentially, as every other layer. All right. But as soon as I start moving these layers backwards or forwards in Z space, all right, so say for example, I grab my bug layer and I grab my Z space like so, or my, my little um, gizmo over here and I drag it forward or backward in Z space. You'll see that it's getting um, either further or closer to the, uh, to the viewer. And as soon as this layer moves beyond the rest of these layers, it gets hidden, right? It's the same layer hierarchy as it is in any other Adobe software. So this is where I now need to plan out and think where I'm going to place my objects. 
cool. So I've got my bug. Let me grab the dude on the right there. Dude on the left, I'll kind of bring back a little bit as well. And essentially what we're doing is we're just placing them in three-dimensional space so that when our camera moves, um, it looks as though these guys are in 3D space and that they move in uh, like relative to the camera, right? So whatever's closest to the camera is gonna move more than whatever's further away. All right, so my foreground grass, I'm gonna bring up to about here so that it doesn't overwrite where my character is. Foreground null, I'll bring forward slightly, maybe about there, All right? So I hope you can see it there. Uh, my mid ground, I'm actually gonna leave where, where it is. My sky, I'll turn off for now so I can move my mountains. And let's shift those quite far back like so and we can turn my sky on and we can push that all the way back as well all right so now the reason why i went and extended my layers in the, the method that i did in photoshop painting out those layers is so that when my camera moves i can actually hide and reveal the things um or like hide and reveal the assets that are currently looking like mistakes all right so if i jump back into photoshop and we take a look at my mountain example here, right? The reason why I simply um, duplicated it and then um, just mirror flipped it essentially is because with my image like so, right? You can imagine then that if I were to shrink this down um, or essentially push it back in 3D space, we would see where these edges get cut off, right? So I've simply just very quickly gone and adjusted it so that for that level, let's grab my mid ground quickly. Uh, and position it in the right place. We want to essentially be able to place these or move these in a, um, in a position where we don't see these dead areas of information. All right, um, and I can use a couple of things to help me fill that up. So I move my mountains to there and then my sky, I can actually move down in Z space. So you'll see that I've also got my gizmo on my front view as well. All right, so if I just click and drag that down, I can move my sky down. Um, and I could even scale this up if I wanted to. Obviously, depending on what you're going to be doing, it's gonna take a lot more effort than my shitty little construction over here. But I figured I might as well just show you guys um, kind of like what this environment or what this instance would look like. Okay, so if we take a look at this now, I've now spaced all my elements out in 3D space, all right? And uh, once I've done this, I can actually close this comp view because I won't need it anymore. And the next thing that I'm going to need is a camera, right? So I'm gonna to go to layer, new camera. Um, I'm not gonna mess around with any of this. Two node camera is fine. Laminate camera one is fine. We're just gonna say okay. And we're gonna use a couple of options on this now. All right, so we've got all of our natural transform points. Point of interest just shows me what it is being looked at. Sorry, I do actually need my other comp viewer just so I can show you exactly what's happening here. Uh, so we've got our point of interest and if I move my point of interest, you'll just see that that just changes essentially the angling of my character, uh, my camera. Um, and notice how, I can also then change the depth of that. Um, but notice how when I move it around that my layers are already starting to sort of act a little bit differently, right? The ones that are closest to it move further away than the ones further behind. Um, and that's kind of the effect that we're going for. So let me just undo all of that. Then we've got our position orientation. That's all fairly similar to, to any other object inside of After Effects. But we do also have access to some camera options over here, right? So we've got zoom, we've got depth of field. I'm going to turn depth of field on, right? Otherwise my depth of field or my, my zoom is not going to work. Um, and I can then also, I'm going to create a key point for my aperture, my focal distance. Let's grab the blur, uh, the blur level and we'll just grab the zoom as well. All right, now I'm gonna hit U for uniform to just bring up those keyframes. Sorry, and I also want to change the point of interest and position for my, <laughs> for my, for my camera. All right, so I'm gonna hit U and there we go. So let me just drag all these back to the beginning of my timeline. Now, an, an animation like this, typically we don't want it to occur over too short an amount of time, right? If our animation uh, occurs too quickly, it's going to break the effect. And if it takes way too long to occur, then um, it's, it's almost gonna be so unnoticeable or like so, um, the progression is going to be so small that it's going to essentially be unnoticeable. So we don't necessarily want that either. All right, so let's start off where we are at. And with my camera, we can actually then change 
uh, my position, right? So you'll see that as I do already, we've got that cool sort of like float effect going on, which is pretty dope. Um, so let me just drag out to the end of the timeline, start messing around with this and see what we can do. All right, so I want it to end kind of like over here. Let's have our, our surfer dudes at the front be our main focus. Uh, let's also have our focal distance, right? So you'll see that as I change this, right, you'll notice that I've got these little pink lines over here that are changing as I do, right? You can see these here. So this is where my focal distance is. All right. So at the end of my animation, I want my focal distance to be on my, uh, my dudes here at the front. So I'm going to kind of just place it here in between them on my um, in my 3D space over here. Sorry, I'm struggling for words today. Um, and then when I mess with my aperture, right, I pulled that all the way up. Notice how it's only my dudes in focus and then everything in the background is like really way out of focus. So I'll just undo that and let's just blur it out. Sorry, I'm changing my focal distance now. Uh, let's just change my aperture so that the background is just slightly more blurred out than it currently is. All right, so you can see the difference here um, we've already got that nice change going on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my focal distance to be all the way out at where the mountains are currently sitting. All right, and I'm also going to change my aperture. I'm actually just going to cut and paste the aperture from earlier on. Um, so let's copy and paste it there. <laughs> so I'm really struggling with all bodily functions today. Sorry. All right, so my focal distance is set, so that's fine. Um, ugh, I was messing with the wrong one, so there we go. Aperture, blur level, let's copy that one. Copy, paste. All right, so now our dudes up in front are really out of focus. Our mountains in the background are nice and in focus. So let's move our position. Uh, let's move slightly this way maybe. Let's bring it higher up. Don't want to be able to see the gaps between my layers, but I can always adjust my layers as well. Um, let's do that. And I can also be a little bit closer even, like so. And I could zoom this camera all the way through, right? So the cool thing about cameras, and um, I'll, I'll probably make a tutorial covering that eventually, is I could move my camera through this entire 3D space and treat these objects as sort of like floating objects in space, which is also a very cool sort of skill and technique to have on hand. Um, but let's see, it is my middle ground that needs to be adjusted. So let's drag that down slightly. So adjust my mountains as well. It's actually the sky that needs to be adjusted. Sorry, there we go. And we'll just drag that down like so. All right, so this is what we're looking at. We've got like a nice focal distance on our mountains over there. And then as time goes forward, my camera is kind of moving and the focus is being pulled from those mountains to my dudes up front. All right, so obviously needing to take um, like the, the focal distance and aperture into uh, account as well as the camera movement, this can take quite a while for your machine to kind of like RAM preview or run through. As you can see, I'm getting the lovely spinning wheel of death. Um, but yeah, you kind of just let it run and you tweak it as you go and it, it needs to be subtle, right? If we have these massive changes, it's just gonna break the, the illusion um, already. Like the camera movement that I've included doesn't necessarily make sense because my because of the way the camera is moving, my shadow is not changing, sort of elongating with it. Um, so I would need to go something with a slightly more static front view kind of um, animation. But yeah, I don't know, like that's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I, I love um, making parallax animations. I think they're one of the cooler things and one of the more fun things that we can do. Um, I've had the pleasure of doing a couple of these for actual client work as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there we go. Just like a nice chill sort of thing going on in the background. So hopefully you guys find it useful and that you didn't think that this was a waste of time. Um, but that's it. Hopefully you found some use for it, like I said. The first steps for this is obviously cutting everything out and deep edging it. You can find out how to do that in my deep edging tutorial. Um, but yeah, this is like the next step that you could then use for that animation. All right, but that's it. I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions or comments, drop those in below. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.